or welcome back to my channel Stitch and Style by me Nadia and today I've got some recent makes and a few alterations to share with you. So I'm so excited to do that. I had a couple of weeks of vlogging um, after the challenge ended, um, oh so me, and I can't thank everybody um, enough for getting involved in my challenge. We had a really fun time. I have been busy in my sewing room, but I've been trying to focus on all of my makes before I go on holiday. So the first thing that I've got done is to make two more of the Sandpiper swimsuit, which is by Helen's Closet, and it is a two-piece. I did do a little vlog on me making my first um, ever swimwear, and so I'm not going to go into too much detail on these because I kind of talked about the sizing and everything in my previous vlog. So if you're interested in learning more about my Sandpiper swimsuit, please check out a couple of vlogs ago. And I said at the end of the last one, the first one was just a practice and I showed you the material that I was going to make two um, more um, sets of the Sandpiper swimsuit out of. I have enjoyed sewing my own swimwear, um, but it isn't entirely without its challenges. The main challenge I found was getting the waistband small enough to be the right size around my waist but also so I could pull them up over my hips. I think the material itself was quite is stretchy enough but um, the seam doesn't have quite as much stretch as the material so that is one little challenge and I would like prefer them a little bit tighter on my waist but I am going to wear these um, and I'm going to, they're going to be coming with me on my holiday. Um, there's nice coverage on the bottoms. I like high-waisted. This material was not the easiest to sew with. So on both cases, they were quite fiddly makes because I was trying to get it so it was all perfectly symmetrical. So can you see there, like I wanted to make sure the line was symmetrical all the way around. And I think I've done a good job of it, but it did take a lot of fiddling around, pinning and everything. I didn't match on the sides on these because I couldn't, I didn't have enough material to pattern match on the sides, but it was still quite fiddly to do. And the same with this one was even more fiddly because I did pattern match this on the sides. Can you see there? pretty pleased with my pattern matching um, so they were quite fiddly to cut out and quite fiddly to sew especially because yeah I had to sometimes like redo the waistband because I was like a little bit lower on this side than that side I think it's probably about just the same but yeah I wanted to keep everything nice and symmetrical yeah I've pattern matched on the side of my top as well because it's quite an obvious stripe so I didn't think I could get away with just not pattern matching and I just did want to put a lot of like time and effort into these. They took a lot longer than I thought they were going to and I was pretty frustrated by the end. I was very pleased to get them over and done with. Now the other pair that I made last time I lined with just some plain um, swimwear jersey but these ones, I've lined it with a power mesh. Now, actually, I prefer the swimwear material. It kind of makes it a little bit more, gives it a little bit more structure and a little bit more kind of compression, I feel, than this power mesh. This power mesh is quite stretchy and, um, yeah, it doesn't give that same support that I would like. So... I think next time I make them, I would definitely line them with a plain swimwear or just the self fabric. But this swimwear material is absolutely lovely. It's Lady McElroy. Um, yeah, just a bit challenging with the stripes, but otherwise, yeah, I really love the colours on it and everything. And um, I'll link the material down below in case you fancy making your own swimwear. After I'd finished my swimwear, I decided to tackle an alterations project and it's this VN dress by Size Me Sewing. And I absolutely love the dress, 
but what I found when I wore it um, last time was the elastic wasn't tight enough to support the weight of the dress so as I was wearing it the waist was slipping down and um, I was I think I was wearing a belt but the waistline was dropping down underneath the belt and it looked all a little bit messy and I thought I would prefer for the elastic to be tight enough to hold the weight of the dress and we put a belt on it and the waistline stays where it should be. So I went about removing the elastic on this. Now regular viewers of my channel might remember me making this dress. I absolutely loved it as I said but I didn't have the right width of elastic when I first made it so I had in the meantime I bought some elastic that was the right width so I took the elastic off that was thinner I think I used six millimeter elastic and this calls for 10 millimeter elastic I think you'll have to check the pattern so I went about and unpicked the elastic and I measured around my waist um, and took quite a few inches off and attached it to the waistband but it still wasn't quite tight enough for my liking so what I decided to do then take it off and then cut it smaller now the size of elastic and the waist seam I was stretching the elastic as hard as I could so I just about fit it on but then I looked at it and it was a little bit wavy and everything and I thought no it's probably best me undoing some um re-sewing it and leaving a little gap and then just plugging that gap with a little bit of elastic so it was on and off three times and it had already been on and off quite a number of times last time I made it so yeah I was it was just after I'd sewn up the swimwear so my levels of frustration with elastic and all these fiddly things was like up to here I, I think some of that frustration came across on my post because yeah I was a little bit frustrated with the elastic and Donna was so sweet to me she was just really um, complimentary on my dress she loved it and she shared it but I did feel I really must apologize to Donna because yeah I think my frustration had come out in the post and, and that wasn't my intention at all but she said um, I thought it was a mistake that she'd put plus five in the um, pattern um, I thought oh she must mean minus five centimeters you know so you can cinch it in at the waist but she said that wasn't her intention so I must apologize for um, saying that she'd made a mistake when she hadn't Um, yeah she said the intention of the pattern is just to bring it in slightly and not for it to be like tight to your waist Um, so just bear that in mind um, when if you make the pattern if you make the VN dress about the width of elastic and what you want it to kind of look like. I definitely wanted it so it sat on my natural waist so then you know I can wear a belt and what have you and it wouldn't slip down um, and I don't really like it when the seam sits a little bit below my natural waist especially because I'm long-waisted so hopefully that all makes sense. Um, the dress itself looked gorgeous on the day. I wore it to meet a friend um, at Goldhawk Road and we had an absolutely lovely time. I was really on the hunt then for a nice, quick, easy project. And as soon as I'd got my order from Anna, you got me in Stitches, who um, runs Pattern Pouch Nest, and I saw the jersey material um, I knew that I had to make a t-shirt out of it so I thought why not just do a nice quick and easy t-shirt one that I know fits me so that's exactly what I did and so I'll show you my t-shirt now so here's my t-shirt it's the Tyra T by Just Patterns it's an oversized relaxed slightly cropped tee and it's just I think the perfect size and shape just 
it's just so comfortable and relaxed and I either I like tight fitting but I also like oversized so this is just like my cup of tea this one and you can see that I've put on this bright pink ribbing on it um, I have top stitched it with a zigzag with um, a matching kind of light coloured thread you can see there and um, this was also a little bit fiddly to cut out because obviously with geometric patterns um, you have to be so careful cutting out to keep it all symmetrical hopefully I've done an okay job with that and this is just going to be a really fun t-shirt for me to wear hopefully I've got some pictures that I can pop in and show you so that was the next sew so that was kind of nice little palette cleanser and um, then um, with this pink ribbing that I had um, and I decided to put on. Now I don't think it entirely matches the pinks in the t-shirt but I think it works for me. So if you watched my So Frugal vlogs you'll know that I created a pair of pink peppermint wide leg pants as a shorts and um, yeah I had tried them on with this and there was just something about the shorts that I just really didn't like. I was finding it difficult to style. I didn't feel like comfortable in them. I didn't feel like I even wanted to take them on my holiday. So um, I thought, what can I do to kind of make them a little bit better? So then I went on to another alterations project and that was just to tweak my peppermint wide leg pants shorts so they were so I wanted to take them on my holiday I'll just grab them here are my shorts now when I tried them on I know I'd had a little bit of an issue with them being too big and I'd taken them in uh, at the back seam and at the side seams I think and when I tried them on they were still about an inch or so too big around the waist so it was a case of taking off the waistband again not entirely I just took it off at the back and the sides and I took it in again um, just to make it fit I think I took off two centimeters to each side so four centimeters in total and fits much better around the waist so that was one problem fixed now I also wasn't keen on the length that they were they were coming down to about just above the knee so quite a long short and I think it's difficult to find out what length you want them uh, just by pinning um, but that's what I had to do obviously so I pinned them up and I probably took off a good couple of inches I feel much more comfortable in them. So the inside leg now is 16 and a half centimetres or six and a half inches and I feel that it just hits me at a nice place. So pretty much mid thigh I think and yeah these are definitely now going to be coming on holiday with me. So I've saved that make and I think the t-shirt and the shorts look really nice together and that's going to make a really nice little cute outfit. Now the next thing I went on to do was to do another alteration and um, this was my So Yellow for Endo make and if you watch that video you'll know that I was saying that I needed to adjust the straps. So I took the straps off at the side, um, actually I made a hole in one of them when I was unpicking. So I recut some straps and made them a couple of centimetres on each side shorter and reattached them and yeah they're looking much better now and I think I used a different interfacing actually one that wasn't quite so stiff so I'm not getting that problem where it was really thick here then really floppy and then um, attached to the dress I think that all is a lot more smoother now and it lies flatter um, yeah so both straps have been taken off and redone and that's ready for my holiday to go um, to wear to the beach or wherever 
and really happy with that make as well. So I did all that on my week off because I had a week off at the beginning of May and um, I had a really nice time. So at the end of that week, I went with Ben to just near Dundee. We had a couple of nights away in a bed and breakfast and we had a beautiful spa there and a private pool. And it was just me and Ben. We used the pool, the sauna and the hot tub. And we had two hours in there and it was absolute bliss. We really enjoyed it. Then on the Saturday, we went and did park run. We did our park run at West Links and that meant that we joined the Compass Club. So we've got North, East, South and West. It's just a really fun little thing that we enjoy doing. Then the next day, um, I was really spoilt and I got to go to Sotoon. So those of you who watch Judy, the running so-and-so, might have seen me make a little appearance on her channel. Yeah, I had such a lovely time at Sotoon. It was so nice. We went shopping at first for fabrics and we also were doing lots of chatting and socialising. And I know these things are really nerve wracking to go to because I'm always a bag of nerves beforehand. Um, but as soon as I get there, all my worries melt away. Tamlin was so welcoming, so lovely. And um, everybody was just such a joy to be with. I was really trying to focus on my sewing. I did like do a little bit of chatting, but I was so focused on trying to get some sewing done. So um, Rachel, um, who is from the channel Stitched Up, um, came over and said, oh, are you going to come and join us for some drinks and what have you? I felt really rude, but I said, well, I'm just like trying to concentrate on my collar. So yeah, what I started to sew at Sew so was the Lyra dress. Now I've never made the Lyra dress before. So this is my first one. Um, when I was shopping in Goldhawk Road, I wanted to get some embroidery on glaze and I ended up getting four metres um, with, and I had in my mind that I wanted a nice long dress embroidery on glaze to take on my holidays. And um, I was looking for some inspiration pictures um, when I was on the way home from London and I found this picture and of a designer dress and it was just like the Lyra. Now the only difference on this picture, which I can't show you because I've never been able to find it since, um, I didn't screenshot it or anything and so I'm kicking myself now, but um, the only difference was with that dress, there was quite a wide fitted waistband on it, um, which the Lyra doesn't have. So if I'd had a little bit more time to play around with the pattern. I would have perhaps um, done a little bit of hacking on the pattern. Maybe put a zip up the side, put a waistband in it and made it a little bit more fitted. But yes, I didn't have the time for that. So I thought I'll just sew up the Lyra. So I got the fabric for it. Then I got the inspiration. Then I got the pattern and I got it cut out and started sewing it all within a couple of days, which I just love about sewing. It can just go from idea to actual garment so quickly, which is so exciting. So I, I'm going to show you my dress now. So here's the Lyra dress. Just such a good pattern. Really nice construction. She, it, she explains everything really well. It's really well drafted, actually. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with the finished dress. I fell in the size five at my bust, four on the waist and five on the hip. And I wasn't too concerned about the hip measurement because it's quite a full skirt. But what I need to be careful about with sizing down is that my upper bust is actually a size up to my full bust. So, um, it just means that the shoulders and the underarms on me um, and across the chest here is going to be too tight. So um, that is something that I need to be careful about. But I cut the size five on the bust and I just graded to size four at the waist and then I graded back out to size five at the hip. So that's what measurement 
I decided to go with and I think it's perfect on me. So this material, I'll show you close up, it's like a, um, would you call that a honeycomb kind of like design? So it's got these like sweet little flowers on one side and these little flowers with the holes on the other side and it's absolutely beautiful. I chose this one because it was pretty but it had quite small holes which is what I wanted because I'm making a dress. I didn't want really big holes in it and I just thought it was just such a pretty design and I like geometric designs and so this yeah kind of ticked that box for me. I did make a few other little alterations to the pattern, mainly just lengthening the bodice. I did my usual sway back adjustment and I also lengthened both tiers um, of the skirt and I wanted it to be midi. Now, now once I'd finished the dress um, I was thinking um, I would really like it that little bit longer so I thought about adding a ruffle to it. So um, I cut out three ruffles and gathered them all up and put them on the bottom of the dress but I looked at it and I thought no it just looks like a nighty. <laughs> so um, I went downstairs and showed Ben and he was like no I don't feel like you should have added the ruffle. I was like no I don't feel like I should have added the ruffle either. So um, I took all that off and just hemmed it and yeah it looks I mean some people might feel like it looks like a nightdress anyway and um, I totally understand why but with the extra ruffle on oh it really did look like a nighty. So I'd made the normal size tie to go with it but what I thought was to make it a little bit more like the inspiration dress is I'd make a wider tie and I'd use the ruffle that I'd already cut out to um, yeah, make a wider tie for it. So that's what I decided to do with the ruffle piece. So that's not gone to waste and I used all four meters on this dress. There's my wide waist belt. So that's a good six centimeters wide. And what I like to do is to put it round the front, um, take it round the back and then tie it um, at the front. And I think that just looks, gives it a really nice look. But I've left it without any um, belt loops or anything because I thought if I wanted to wear a different belt I can do and um, if I want to wear a thinner belt I can do a different coloured belt yeah um, so I think there's lots of options for styling this and I'm really happy with where the waist line sits on this dress. It sits exactly on my natural waist. I'm pleased with where the bust darts point. They point at the fullest part of my bust. I did have a little bit of a, I did really have to concentrate when I did the collar, but I feel like I've done a really good job on the collar. Um, I did it, I never follow the button placings because I always lengthen the bodice so I just go with what I think and I've got a little bit better at kind of spacing my bu buttons out. I just went with these really standard buttons, little white ones and um, oh I did lengthen the sleeves as well. Now in terms of construction actually apart from the collar which I followed all the construction method but after I'd finished that then I didn't look at the instructions anymore, I just kind of knew what I was doing and got on with it. So I can't really say whether the rest of the instructions were good, but I'm sure they were. Um, and I definitely recommend giving the Lyra a go. Um, I just think it looks absolutely fabulous. Um, I like wearing it without the belt, I like wearing it with the belt. Um, I don't feel like it's too oversized. and this is just going to be perfect for my holiday. Now um, I know with Brodery and Glaze it is a little bit see-through um, and I don't mind that at all if I'm on the beach or what have you and I didn't bother lining any of it so I did buy a slip so I've got a slip to wear underneath it with a tone that matches my skin tone and yeah that looks absolutely fine um, underneath you can't really see anything so yeah, I'm so happy with that and I hope you like it. 
So then I was back at work and um, I was working for the week, but then at the weekend, I went to another social event. I know, I have been really, really spoiled. So I went to the Izzo So Studio Social and it was such a beautifully warm day and I totally wore the wrong outfit. I was very overdressed and I was very, very hot. Um, yeah, I don't think I paid enough attention to what the weather was going to be like. Now, I did have a little bit of an issue with my machine because I forgot my pedal. And I think it was because I'd been at so Tune and everything was just out of place. And I'd been busy sewing up my Lyra in the meantime and trying to get some things cut out. Um, I was all in a massive disorganised mess. I'm feeling a lot better. I've given it everywhere a good tidy up so feeling a lot better about that now but at the time I was my head was a little bit all over the place so um yeah thank you to Izzy for loaning me her machine um I did have a little bit of trouble with it so I didn't get as much as I wanted to get done but I tell you what about socials everyone's so lovely and we had a really nice long cutting out station my battery just died. I think I was talking about there being uh, such a long space for cutting out. So I have got something cut out, which is the saltwater slip dress um, that I want to make. Um, but it's like so many makes, so little time um, at the moment. But one thing that I really was keen to get sewn out for my holiday was a pair of lightweight trousers. So I decided to cut out a pair of the Barry pants. The Barry pants are by Stylark and they're the brother to Bob. <laughs> now you might have seen me review the Barrys and the Bobs in a previous video and I was trying to decide which one I prefer most and I have made a couple, I have made a pair of the Bobs since um, I haven't made a pair of the Barry's and actually I think the Barry's are my favourite. Um, I might be tempted next time I make them to leave off the ruffle at the top, I don't know. But this time I included the ruffle and I'll just get my trousers. So here are the trousers that I made. So I made them in this lovely chambray fabric um, and they're really nice and lightweight and you've got a slash pocket which is top stitched down and the pocket bags are sewn into the waistline so they don't flop around which I much prefer to an inseam pocket and you've got four inch elastic around the waist and then with a ruffle detail on the top. Also on the barries you've got this little dart on the ankle just to bring it in a little bit. So in my previous vlog I talked quite a bit about the sizing um, now that was quite a while ago and I've learnt a little bit more about fitting since then. So when I came to have a look at my pattern piece, I could not work out what I'd done. And I made a few tweaks with it. So I actually did a full seat adjustment by two centimetres and then took about two and a half centimetres out of the centre back um, as a sway back adjustment. I do feel like I would prefer them just to sit that tiny little bit higher on me. Um, so I would like a little bit more rise. So I'd probably add another centimetre both at the front and the back next time I make them. But I'm really super happy with these. I've got most of them sewn up at the Iso Sew Studio um, social. They're just going to make a lovely pair of trousers for me to wear on my holidays. Now they are a little bit creasy, unfortunately. This is the thing that you get with cotton. It's lovely, soft handle and beautiful to work with. Um, but yeah, the creases um, are real. <laughs> but I'm just going to try and embrace it. So yeah, they're not perfectly ironed, so apologise for that. When I was doing some cutting out for the social, I also decided to cut out the assembly line high cuff top. And I was thinking, oh, maybe that's like a, a faux jumpsuit and I could wear them together um, if it turns out. So I had cut out the cuff top and I'd started to sewing it. Now, I'm not really a fan of facings and 
this one has a facing and I'd seen from other people that they kind of brought down their front neckline a little bit and I'd done some tweaks on the pattern before I'd even started. So this was kind of like a practice of this. But I got halfway through it and I put was and I put it on and I just thought no. I just just something about it wasn't working for me. I think maybe it was material, I don't know. Um so I decided halfway through the project, and I've done this before I know, is to do a 180 and to use a material in the make that I'm doing to cut out something else. So that's what I decided and I was totally influenced by Tamlin, sewn on the tie, who's made a Donny shirt and also there was a lovely um, sewist that I met at Iso Sew Studio um, who's called Abby and Abby was making a Donny shirt in some lovely Merchant and Mills fabrics. Yeah, I was totally influenced and I've also seen that um, both So Do it, Emma and Ruan, the Yorkshire Sew Girl, have also done Donny shirts and they all look fantastic. So what I decided to do, I could actually get out of the um, cuff top quite wide pieces and I could actually cut out the front part using um, that top. So I did have a bit left and um, I was able to cut out a Donny shirt. So I've sewn that up. Now, I will probably just pop this on to show you. I am really happy with it, but there are some things that I'm not kind of sure about. So the nice thing about this pattern, it's um, size inclusive. I'll just stand up to show you. So I'll pop up the line drawings um, so you can see that. And it's, um, yeah, it's not got any buttons or anything down the front. It is cut on in two pieces, so there is um, a seam down the centre front. So we've got a little patch pocket, which I cut on the cross grain, as you can see. Um, I probably did have enough material, but I just wanted to kind of play around. I did also cut the um, yoke pieces on the cross grain as well. And it's got this kind of like little camp collar and short sleeves. I actually lengthened the sleeves by two centimetres. I also lengthened the shirt by two centimetres just because I have um, a long body. I didn't want to do it for style reasons. I just wanted to make sure that um, it kind of hit where it should. And I'm really happy with the length. The only thing that I'm unsure about is how low it comes down here. So you can see like I'm wearing a vest and um, this, which I feel is a little bit too low for me anyway. If I was just to wear this shirt with a bra, you would be able to see my bra with it. Um, so for me, it's a little bit low. Now I did try and just like stitch, slip stitch it up to there, but then it didn't lie quite right. So I've undone that. If I wanted to make it again, I mean, I normally wear a vest underneath my clothes anyway. So um, yeah, that is not a big deal, but I don't know. I, do I want to show that I'm wearing a vest underneath? I don't know. <laughs> I think what I could do is have a little bit of a play around with the pattern and redraft it slightly. So I could sew up it up a little bit further up here without ruining kind of how it lies you'd need to I'd need to adjust the pattern pieces for that um so yeah that's the only kind of little bit of a disappointment with this shirt for me otherwise I really love it um now I tried it on with my Barry pants and oh you would laugh because it just looks like I'm wearing scrubs so I thought no, unless I wanted to go to a fancy dress party, that is not a look that I want to be going for. But yeah, um, <laughs> with other makes, I think it looks, it will look good. Um, I'm still a little bit unsure about it. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'll rush to make another. I'm going to see how I get on with this one, whether I enjoy wearing it. I mean, it could just be the material 
and now I've thought about scrubs it's just that's all I've got in my mind I've not actually asked Ben what he thinks of this make um, I'll see if um, he can give me his uh, wise opinion on it the other thing that I wanted to say about this make was Chelsea who does Friday Pattern Company she does so longs and like helpful tutorials and things and her instructions are brilliant I did notice a couple of like tiny little errors but um, yeah it was really nice um, to sew um, I did follow all of the instructions for this make and it probably challenged me a little bit more than I thought it was going to this little um, bit here you have to you know sew to the drill point and um, just be careful take your time and do it nice and slowly the collar was a little bit challenging too but also the hem was a little bit challenging because it's on a curve um, it is hard to do it so it all lies neatly and I was really trying to not get that roping I have got a little bit of roping actually at the back but it's all okay I, th I think when I was a beginner so if I was trying to sew this maybe a year ago I think I would have found it really challenging so I know the pattern is for an intermediate sewist and I say, I would say that's probably about right but if you're up for the challenge then go for it. So that's all the things that I had to share with you today. I hope you really enjoyed seeing them, maybe got a little bit of motivation to perhaps do some alterations. Um, I love doing alterations actually. Um, I find sometimes it's just as enjoyable as doing a new make. I was listening to Helen and Caroline Love to Sew podcast and um, they were talking about works in progress and I just found that um, episode really interesting, it was funny, they made me laugh and totally relatable. Um, I don't I tend to have actually many works in progress but I could relate to a lot of things that they were talking about anyway. I would recommend checking it out if you haven't done so already. So I'm very excited, getting ready for my holidays. Hopefully I'll get a couple more makes in before I go and hopefully you'll be able to see me wearing some of my makes um, if you follow me on Instagram. I know that not everybody's on Instagram and so hopefully I'll be able to show you those in um, an upcoming vlog and I'll try not to leave it too long before my next one although I am going to be on holiday so I'll probably be having a little bit of downtime as well. Thanks to everybody who watches, subscribes and likes my channel. I'll see you all next time. Bye!